I think we're getting very close to rediscovering some of the things that um, our ancient ancestors were up to. And um, so through somehow, through this technology, they're able to move stones or cut stones or all the above? All the above. And, all the above. and even transport them? In the fascinating realm of Randall Carlson's sacred number theory, numbers transcend their basic arithmetic function, embodying deep cosmic and spiritual significance. This theory, interwoven with the principles of sacred geometry, posits that certain numbers and the geometric patterns they represent hold a universal, almost mystical quality, observable in nature, ancient architecture, and cosmology. A cornerstone of this theory is the examination of specific numbers that recur with astonishing frequency across various natural, architectural, and astronomical contexts. Take the number 108, for instance. In Hinduism, it's considered sacred, and in astronomy, it's intriguingly represented as the approximate distance ratio. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is about 108 times the Sun's diameter, and the distance from the Earth to the Moon is roughly 108 times the Moon's diameter. This pattern appears too frequently to be mere coincidence, according to Carlson's theory, suggesting an underlying cosmic order. Carlson's theory further delves into the realm of sacred geometry, exploring how shapes like the flower of life, the Fibonacci spiral, and the golden ratio, approximately 1.618, are fundamental to understanding the structure of the universe. These patterns are found everywhere in nature, from the arrangement of leaves on a stem to the spirals of galaxies. The golden ratio, in particular, is seen in the proportions of the Parthenon in Greece and the Great Pyramid of Giza, indicating that ancient architects might have employed these as sacred proportions to mirror the harmony found in nature. In exploring ancient architectural marvels, Carlson points out how these structures were often aligned with astronomical phenomena. For example, the Great Pyramid of Giza aligns with the cardinal points of the compass, while Stonehenge aligns with the solstices. These alignments are not arbitrary but deliberate, indicating a sophisticated understanding of celestial movements. This knowledge, coupled with the use of sacred numbers in their design, suggests that these ancient structures were more than just physical edifices. They were constructed with a deep understanding of and connection to the cosmos. Moreover, Carlson's theory touches upon the idea that ancient civilizations might have encoded this knowledge of sacred numbers and geometry into their myths and religious texts. This idea proposes that stories and symbols from ancient texts are not just folklore or religious dogma, but are allegorical representations of profound scientific and astronomical knowledge. Venturing further into Randall Carlson's exploration of sacred numbers, we enter the realm of sacred geometry a concept that suggests the universe itself is constructed on geometric principles. This intriguing notion posits that certain geometric shapes and patterns are foundational to the physical world. From the microcosm of atomic structures to the macrocosm of galaxies. Central to the idea of sacred geometry is the concept of the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Often symbolized by the spiral pattern seen in galaxies, hurricanes, and even the structure of DNA. The Fibonacci sequence, a series of numbers where each number is the sum of the two preceding ones, manifests in the natural world in surprising ways. For instance, a pattern of seeds in a sunflower follows this sequence, leading to the formation of a spiral that adheres to the golden ratio. Carlson's theory explores how this ratio, approximately 1.618, is not just a mathematical curiosity, but a fundamental characteristic of the universe. This divine proportion is found in the shells of snails, the structure of human faces. It's as though this ratio represents a cosmic blueprint for aesthetic and structural perfection. In the realm of astronomy, sacred geometry is evident in the orderly patterns of planetary orbits and the distribution of galaxies in the cosmos the intricate dance of celestial bodies follows predictable geometric paths suggesting a harmonious and orderly universe that resonates with the principles of sacred geometry 
Delving deeper into Randall Carlson's sacred number theory, we encounter the mesmerizing world of ancient civilizations and their seemingly intentional alignments with cosmic phenomena. This segment explores how various ancient structures around the world are not just feats of architectural grandeur, but also sophisticated astronomical observatories, revealing a profound understanding of celestial mechanics. One of the most iconic examples is the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. According to Carlson's theory, this pyramid is not only a marvel of engineering, but also a structure deeply embedded with astronomical significance. The pyramid sides are closely aligned to the cardinal points of the compass, and the structure's dimensions are said to be a scale model of the Earth, incorporating the sacred numbers and geometrical patterns reflective of the cosmos. This alignment and incorporation suggest that the ancient Egyptians had a profound understanding of the Earth's size and shape, and its place in the solar system. Moving to Stonehenge in England, this prehistoric monument is another exemplar of ancient cosmic alignment. The arrangement of its massive stones aligns perfectly with the solstices, indicating a deep knowledge of the solar cycle. These alignments might have been used for ceremonial purposes, agricultural planning, or as a way to mark the passage of time. The precision of these alignments baffles modern scientists, given the technological limitations of the era. Carlson also points to the ancient city of Teotihuacan in Mexico, where the layout of the city and its pyramids mirrors the positions of celestial bodies. The Pyramid of the Sun, Pyramid of the Moon, and the Temple of the Feathered Serpent form a complex that aligns with specific points in the sky, suggesting a sophisticated understanding of astronomy by the Teotihuacans. These alignments and architectural feats are not confined to a single region, but are a global phenomenon. From the Nazca Lines in Peru, vast geoglyphs in the desert which some theorize to be aligned with constellations, to the megalithic temples of Malta, whose orientations align with astronomical events, ancient structures around the world show a pattern of cosmic integration. Carlson theorizes that this widespread phenomenon indicates a universally shared understanding of astronomy among ancient civilizations. This knowledge, he suggests, might have been used not just for practical purposes like agriculture, but also for deeper spiritual or metaphysical reasons. The precise nature of these alignments and constructions implies that ancient societies had a holistic view of the Earth and the cosmos, seeing themselves as an integral part of a larger cosmic order. In the intriguing exploration of Randall Carlson's sacred number theory, we find a compelling intersection between ancient mythologies and geological evidence, particularly concerning the narrative of a great flood. This segment delves into how Carlson connects the dots between geological data and the flood myths prevalent in various cultures, suggesting a catastrophic event in Earth's history that left an indelible mark on human consciousness. Across numerous civilizations, from the Mesopotamian epic of Gilgamesh to the biblical story of Noah's Ark, there are strikingly similar tales of a massive flood that wiped out most of humanity. Carlson investigates these myths not as mere allegorical tales, but as potential historical records of actual events. He points to geological evidence of significant climatic shifts and catastrophic flooding at the end of the last ice age, around 11,600 years ago. This period, known scientifically as the Younger Dryas, is characterized by sudden cooling followed by rapid warming, which could have led to massive glacial melting and rising sea levels. Supporting this theory is the discovery of large-scale geological features that are indicative of massive flooding. For instance, the scablands in the Pacific Northwest of the United States show evidence of having been carved by massive, swift flows of water far beyond what could be caused by normal riverine processes. These features include large channels cut into the bedrock, known as coulees and giant ripple marks, which are difficult to explain without invoking catastrophic flood events. Carlson posits that such a flood could have been triggered by a variety of factors, including comet impacts that led to rapid melting of ice caps, causing a sudden and dramatic rise in sea levels. This hypothesis is bolstered by evidence of extraterrestrial impact events, such as high concentrations of iridium and nanodiamonds found in geological layers dating to the Younger Dryas period. The implications of this theory are profound. If true, it suggests that many of the great flood myths are not mere stories, but are based on real events that had a catastrophic impact on prehistoric human civilizations. This perspective also underscores the fragility of human societies in the face of dramatic environmental changes. Moreover, Carlson's exploration highlights the interconnectedness of mythology, geology, and astronomy. By linking geological evidence with ancient narratives, he presents a compelling case for re-examining our understanding of ancient history 
and the forces that have shaped the development of human civilization. And as always, thanks for watching our video today.